Four floors under the ground here in Milan is Pirelli's secret testing facility, where every day they are conducting tests to improve the Formula 1 tyres. Like this big machine which is replicating a whole race for an upcoming Grand Prix. And this is another test where the tyre is going so quickly that on the monitor it looks like it's barely moving at all. These are just some of the 40,000 tyres Pirelli create for the Formula 1 season. And they've been Formula 1's sole tyre supplier since 2011. And last year it was announced that their partnership had been extended to 2027. And so when I got the chance to speak to Pirelli at the Las Vegas Grand Prix and I found out about their testing facility, I just knew I had to make a video about it. We'll be finding out how they're testing these Formula 1 tyres and ultimately why they're needing to still do this. Firstly looking over their archive on how drawings are still being used today, then onto some of the unique ways they're testing for sound, and then we're getting a live demonstration of not one but two different Formula 1 tyre tests. But Pirelli's journey with Formula 1 didn't start in 2011. They've been part of the championship for many Many, many years. In fact, they were even present at the very first Formula 1 Grand Prix race at Silverstone in 1950. And on my visit to Milan, I was introduced to some of that heritage in their archive facility. This is part of the Pirelli Foundation which was formed in 2008 to bring together all of their history into one building, with five rooms containing their entire history back from when the company first started here in Milan in 1872. They even have their own library which contains all of the original books and the papers throughout their history all about rubber which is exactly what the technicians and engineers used as Pirelli were the first business in Italy to create tyres using rubber. So they needed research on site to develop and study the material. Archive is a huge part of Pirelli, like these 700,000 images kept containing original photos taken throughout their motorsport years, including images from the early inception of Formula 1 here at Silverstone. Part of this archive is also including every original drawing for all the tyres they have ever produced. And the reason for why these are so important is because these these drawings are still being used today. And one of the many reasons for this is because there's still many heritage vehicles out there which require still Pirelli tyres but using the old tread patterns. Now since its first manufacturing process, the rubber inside has obviously been developed to be a higher standard, the exact tread pattern for that has remained the same. So if you have a bespoke tyre, how is that tread pattern then actually put onto the rubber itself? Whether it's a replica tyre or a prototype, they're loaded onto this machine, then whilst the wheel is slowly rotating, a laser is etching on the tread pattern lines all across the wheel. The tyres are then brought to here to the technician bay where the operators will manually cut out all those stencil markings on the tyre. Doing this process for the prototypes is a lot easier than just making a negative mould and then finding out later on that the testing for it hasn't worked out. So the operators can try out the new tread patterns here and if they're needing to make any adjustments during the testing process it's a simple case of bringing it back here to the technician bays and cutting it out. The way they cut it out is by using a heated copper blade which has different thicknesses and bevel types which comes in real handy when they are carving out for the pole position award. This is done onto the Pirelli's wind tunnel tyres, which is what the teams are using for when they're doing wind tunnel testing. But I had always assumed that this was just logos printed onto the tyre. I never realised it was actually engraved out. And this is a much simpler approach of just laying over a stencil and engraving the text and the track map from the tyre. But just before we see a Formula 1 tyre test going on and being pushed to the very limit, one thing which they test here in Milan, which I wasn't expecting to see, is them testing how loud a tyre gets. In this room, only the floor reflects the sound. All the walls and ceiling absorb the noise to make it incredibly quiet. And that's because in this room they are testing the noise conditions of a tyre, testing different tread patterns on how much noise it creates in different speeds and heights. The reason for this is because the tread pattern can project different sound waves going off in different directions. So they need to use 10 microphones surrounding the tyre to try and balance out that noise. And as the steel drum speeds up and you move around the room, you can really hear the difference from being in front to then standing on the side. Now these are more aimed towards EV cars and not really for motorsports but it's one aspect which I'd never really considered before. But right then onto the first big machine on how they're testing the Formula 1 tyres. This is the flat track machine and its parameters can be set to reproduce any scenario on track, which is one of the reasons why it's worth over 5 million euros. We, we have uh, our indoor test department here in Milan with uh, a lot of different machines because obviously we want to test in the level of durability, fatigue test, high speed test, standing wave test. We have many different uh, type of test to stress the tires in any condition. Priority for us is to supply a tire that is uh, safe. And then obviously consistency of the production. The performance and some characteristics that are required like 
delta lifetime between compounds, uh, level of degradation, to try to encourage different strategies. Uh, we want to be a partner of the sport, not just a supplier. That means that we try to spice the action a little bit, and uh, this is what uh, we usually do. Here, the testing isn't to try and push the tire to a breaking point. Its goal is to try and get every last bit of analysis data before they hit the track. This does just focus on dry testing, but it's one of the many reasons why they still do many practical wet tire testings on physical tracks with the teams. But when they do come to do a dry test day, this machine would have done the bulk of the development work. Now, Formula One tires, of course, have to work for all types of circuit and not just be fast at one particular one. So that's why this machine is testing a variety of different circuit configurations. For example, at Silverson, it's mostly flat with fast speed corners, which means you generate a lot more heat into the sides. Whereas a circuit like Zanvort, because of the banking, it means you're actually putting in a lot more load and G-forces into the tire structure. So the results from this are finding the optimum. And Pareti can give accurate data on pressures, tire life and performance that they can expect before the race weekends. The way the test is conducted is the tire is added onto the machine and then is lowered down onto a rolling road. This sits on a belt which has a standardized roughness that you would typically get on a Formula 1 circuit to keep all the data consistent. For example, you'll sometimes hear from drivers that a particular track has more degradation. And one of the aspects that could be producing this is a result of the track surface being more rough on the tires, which ultimately makes the performance of the tires slightly worse. Within the tire, they have many sensors which detect real time all the performances of the tire through the conditions that they're putting them through. To help break down how this machine works, it controls the tire's position looking left and right, as well as tilting it either way. And finally, the amount of load being pushed down into the surface, and of course, the overall speed. All of these parameters put together and matching it to data from real world track examples, it means that Pirelli are then able to replicate the camber angle, the inclination angle, steering angle, positive and negative torque, plus keeping track of the tire's temperature on the surface and on the inside. At the beginning of the season, Pirelli won't physically share the new tires with the teams, but they will share the data from their simulation work. All the teams are given a universal data sheet and then are given eight hours each to work with Pirelli at this test bench to help develop their car further by creating their own testing scenarios. The biggest area teams are looking to test are how their cars are taking corners and how much grip they are able to achieve. When you turn a Formula One car, the tires generate something called a slip angle. This is the difference between the direction of the car is moving and the angle of the tires. That slip angle generates a lateral force and the more the driver turns the wheel to make the bigger slip angle, the higher amount of force is generated. And this force holding onto the grip of the track also has to battle with the force coming from the car's weight, also known as inertia. The team can use their data on the amount of downforce they're expected to get to see if it's pushing the rubber enough into the track surface to give them enough grip to hold against that inertia force. How well the car turns depends on the grip of the tires. Grip comes down to a combination of the weight of the tires, which includes the car's downforce and overall weight, and how well the tires stick to the track. So the teams can add these parameters into the machine for the correct load, acting as the car's weight to generate that normal force. It will replicate a corner to produce its cornering force to see if they've got the correct balance between the cornering force and the inertia to avoid understeer. And this is how you'll find some teams having a stronger weekend by being able to extend their tires further than others. Only at the end of their development of the car is when the new tires for the season are given to the teams for their test and filming days. During a test, it can also generate a 3D tire model showing the stress points or the heat maps. And then this 3D tire model with all of that data can be loaded onto a Formula One simulator for further testing. We have uh, these uh virtual tire that is available for the teams. They can plug the tire into their simulators, drive the car, the virtual car, and give us feedback. To give you an example, when we had to develop the 18 inches tire, we tested virtually 70 different specifications, but we tested on track only 30, because most of the work was on the virtual environment. And obviously this is useful to cut the time for development and to be more sustainable because we reduce the number of physical prototypes that we have to build. But what about their breaking point? What limits can these tires be really pushed to? This is a high speed test rig going up to 500 kilometers per hour and temperatures over 100 degrees Celsius. They're having to use a 
a stroboscopic light, which flashes a singular light in order to see the tire's average position, which is why on the monitor it looks like it's not moving. In fact, it's currently doing 310 kilometers per hour here. It's just a bit of a weird optical illusion. Here they are applying pressure, pushing the tire against the rolling road, and in some cases up to 100 kilograms of force, because this is the machine which is simulating the downforce the tire could experience. The goal here is to push the tire to its limit to see how safe it is in extreme conditions. And so they're able to avoid multiple contributing factors, this test is done on a smooth rolling surface, as opposed to the abrasive one we saw earlier. This way, if the tire does break down from having too much load pushed in, or the structure breaks down, it wouldn't be a result of the abrasive surface, but just the rubber reaching its end point. Now you might be looking at this tire and thinking, this looks absolutely fine on the outside, but in fact they're actually testing the stress on the inside, which is where it's being destroyed. As a Formula 1 tyre has many different layers contributing to it. All of those joins together are inside a tyre and once they've broken apart that is when they'll see the tyre being pushed to its very limit. And every day here in this testing facility they are doing 150 different tests, not just for Formula 1 but all forms of motorsports. The driver's feedback is, uh, is very very important because at the end of the day they are the people that are driving the cars. Obviously each one has a different opinion. If you talk to the drivers they don't want a degradation. If you talk to Formula 1 uh, instead they want want a certain level of degradation to encourage a two-stop strategy. Uh, the FIA is committed to safety and, and this kind of stuff. So that's why we have uh, regular meetings with uh, everyone uh, to decide all together which, which are the characteristics required. But we have one product uh, and uh, we have to, de to design only one tire that is uh, the best compromise we can uh, we can make. But it's also important to correlate uh, their feedback with the data collected. Current Formula one cars are unbelievable in the number of sensors they fit uh, but uh, when we develop uh, a new construction or compounds uh, we have the opportunity to test uh, always new materials and new ideas of uh, talking about compounds in 2022 with the new 18 inches tire for example we decided to uh, introduce a complete a new family of compounds with different concepts different polymers and different ideas that were not used in the past and gave us uh, a big improvement in terms of overheating the reduction for example or uh, managing the degradation in the way that was expected and so on. Now, although Pirelli's headquarters are in Milan, this is just where they're doing the testing. Their manufacturing process for Formula 1 tyres is done in a different facility. So if you're interested in watching that, let me know down in the comments below and I'll speak to my contacts and hopefully we can make that happen in future. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.